Good morning, everyone. We are in Port Colborne, Ontario again, as usual. Uh, the east wall, south of Lock 8. That's the uh, Clarence Street Bridge to the south of us. It's Sunday morning, August the 9th. It's about 72 degrees right now, a little bit of a breeze. It's supposed to get to 79 degrees today. It's bright and sunny the way it is right now. We're looking at the Whitefish Bay. Whitefish Bay. CSL, Canada Steamship Lines. One of the new Trillium class ships. The CSL. And if you recall, the last time that we saw her was in January of this year. And she was here in Port Colborne on winter layout. We had some uh, video of her at birth just south of the uh, Clarence Street Bridge there, tied up against the wall. I believe it's Wharf 16. And outside of her was the Paul Martin tied up next to her. The Whitefish Bay is a Trillium class uh, ship, Canada Steamship Lines. Newest in technology, newest in fuel economy, efficiency. Operates on a crew of about 18. This is a self-unloader, as you can see, and you will be able to see when it gets closer to us here, uh, the conveyor on the uh, deck. The last two newer ones, the Saint Laurent and the Wellen, are what they call gearless bottoms. They don't have the conveyors on it. They would need a uh, clam to go down in and unload the cargo, uh, or what other method that there might be. She is headed for Hamilton. She's coming out of Ashtabula, Ohio. I believe she may have coke on board about 30,000 tons. There you can see him swing the nose of her over. Now special interest to the Whitefish Bay to me now is Captain Jason Church who I follow on Twitter and from previous postings you'll know that Captain Church is a relief captain. He has just gotten back to duties now. Oh about uh, five days ago now, <clears throat> excuse me, he was on holidays for a month. Prior to that he was assigned to the Thunder Bay and I got some video of him on the Thunder Bay. Matter of fact the last time coming through here on the Thunder Bay he took a snap of me, posted it on Twitter and I got it saved and yeah, I was quite surprised and quite pleased. Thank them very much for doing that for me. So he is the captain on board right now. And uh, he'll be serving on here for, oh, I don't know, until maybe he's in relief. More than likely he's in relief, yes, and he'll be spared off. In another month, he might go to another ship. He may stay on here. I have followed him now on this, the Whitefish Bay, and then prior to that, the uh, Thunder Bay, and prior to that, the Baikonur. And then he started out, uh, I believe, on the Niagara or the Laurentian was his or original duties to uh, relief captain, either one of those. Hmm. 
I'm hoping maybe to uh, be able to wave and say hi to him this morning. I messaged him earlier today on Twitter that I see that his ETA was approximately 10.30 this morning. It's now 11.15. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and there was another ship that uh, got in front of him. That's what made him about 45 minutes late. So as you can see, he's low on the water. He'd be drafting about uh, 8.1 meters. That's about 26 and a half feet. And for the summertime, that's about what they're allowed to draft. With the water levels that the way they are for the summertime, get a little lower and so on. I watched a special last uh, week on one of Al Goldman's ships, the Equinox, the new one. I've posted a video on here of the Equinox and they had a special on the Discovery Channel. And uh, it was a very interesting and a couple of the people I follow on there, the captain and the acting first mate who is over right now in China and who is uh, bringing back one of the brand new ships from over there. And it was quite interesting uh, that night to see the goings on of loading these things and, and uh, the responsibilities of, of that first mate as he lo loads this thing, how they keep it balanced and so on. Uh, it's, it's quite amazing. So, Whitefish Bay. I saw in one of the earliest postings on YouTube of the Whitefish Bay in the Detroit River, she sounded, she was cruising down the Detroit River and there was a small craft in front of them, just a 24 outboard motor, two guys fishing, whatever it was. And these guys wouldn't get out of the way. And the skipper that night was getting towards sunset. He sounded a five blasts on his horn. That means get out of the way. And he proceeded to do an immediate hard right. The uh, the Whitefish Bay did to get out of the way of this guy. And it showed these guys, uh, I don't know how close they were to this ship, but that was the first encounter that this ship had in her first cruise. So here she is, Trillium Class, Whitefish Bay. Been in service now about, uh, oh, two years, three years? Yeah, it was quite a little thrill to see her tied up here in Port Colbert, along with the uh, Paul Martin and the Bicomo. Oh, by the way, I, I hashtag East Wall South Lock 8. One of these days I must find out that this is the very point that I'm sitting on here, this East Wall South Lock 8. I believe it is, it might be, uh, Wharf 14, because I know south of the bridge on the east wall, it's Wharf 16, and on the opposite wall, uh, on the west side of the canal, it's Wharf 18. So this may be Wharf 14. I must check that out. So, you see he's got the nose of her just about right up against the wall. <coughs> Being conveyed the information from the uh, front end. Now he's bringing the back end of her over. And I would believe, I stand to be corrected here, 
I would believe that there is a pilot on board who is piloting the ship. Now I'm going to try and get a look to where he is. He should be around the 8 meter mark on that level there. <clears throat> I'll try and let you have a look at that. By the way, I'm filming from my spy glasses today. Uh, I've showed you them in the past. They work fairly good. Well, I can't see too clear there, but when he gets a little closer... I see 10. <coughs> Excuse me. I see... Uh, I'm not sure that the next number below it, if it's 9 or 8. I can't make it out. These glasses are not prescription glasses, obviously. They're for video and for recording. But I believe that that would be eight right there, right at the water line. So guess what, folks? He's right on the max. No. Is that nine or is that eight? I gotta wait till it gets closer here. <coughs> Oh, that is a nine. Ten, nine. And guess what that number is right at the water line there. Can you see it? An eight. About 8.1. 8.1 8 gives you your 26 and a half feet. Now this canal, I believe, is a, about 30 feet deep. Now how deep it would be in the summer times, I think it's around about 28 feet deep. So he's about two feet off the bottom. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. These things just, just absolutely fascinate me. They're monsters. They're giants. They just glide through the wa water so slowly. And you've got millions and millions of dollars worth of cargo here. Now, I, I don't know what this cargo would be on board now, if it's a load of coke. But I remember them saying that in that the Discovery presentation of the Equinox, she had on 26.5 of green. And that was a $10 million cargo. There you can see. See 8? See the 8 right in the water? 8.1. 26.5 meters. Isn't that beautiful? The White Fish Bay. Of course, you know, White Fish Bay is just uh, west of the Sioux, Sioux St. Marie, Ontario, and Michigan. Whitefish Point, and uh, it's up in that area, just below that island, where the uh, Edmund Fitzgerald went down in 1975. Tragedy, real tragedy. Twenty-nine men lost their lives. Terrible storm, terrible storm. Hurricane force winds.
How are you? Pretty good. I'm not talking to myself. Did you hear me? Yeah. But did you hear me as you were coming along? I was talking. I, I'm videoing right now. I got glasses that video. I'm going to pull it on, and I'm making a description and so on. Is Captain Church on the bridge? Is he? Tell him somebody wants to say hi to him. I follow him on Twitter. He'll just, he'll just say hi to me. He knows who it is. <laughs> Last time he threw, he was on the uh, Thunder Bay. Okay. He took a picture of me sitting here from the bridge and put it on Twitter. Oh, yeah. So I saved it, yeah. One of these days I'm going to suck up to him to get a ride on this thing. <laughs> Somehow or another, I don't know how, but maybe. I'd love to go from the lakehead out to Set Isles sometime. Yeah. One great big trip. But I don't think the company would go too good for that. Well, there's 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 that pole stream lines. Yeah, they 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 take on uh, cruises if you'd want to call them on. But uh, I've been fascinated with these things ever since I was that high. I remember the old Canada steamship lines. Uh, you remember the Hushalaga? You remember? You wouldn't remember that. Yeah, that was before your time. I was, I was seven years old down at the old Welland South Bridge right across from Union Carbide. That's on the old cut. You guys go through the new cut now. Yeah. So I was swim. Hushalaga. James R. Dunn. Some of the old ships of CSL. Oh yeah. A Hushalaga. I should walk back there and say hi to him. So you're coming out of Ashtabula? No, uh, Conneaut. Conneaut. What do you got on? Coal? Coal? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Sure. I've been trying, trying to get an answer. I see a lot of loads going into Nanticoke. Is that all iron ore? Mostly. Who's using it? U.S. Steel. U.S. Steel. Steel Canada. U.S. Steel Canada. Yeah. Their stockpile up there? Oh, so I don't know too much about the details, but uh, I guess... Because the, the hydro facility shut down, huh? Yeah, so... Yeah, they, they used to get coal from across the, 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 across the river. Yeah. Or across the lake, I should say. That's I see. Is there a steel plant there? No. Well, that used to be a hydro generation station there. Oh, oh, okay. Okay, so you guys are out in the water. That's the that's the U.S. steel. But when you go right in close to the port, right in close to land. That's the old. Okay, now I got it. Okay, now I got it. Now I got it. So it's U.S. Steel, and it's more because I see a lot coming out of two harbors, a lot, <coughs> and I see a lot coming out of uh, Superior. I follow you guys on marine traffic, hey, a website. I follow you on the different webcams in Duluth, Port Huron. Detroit. I you should should have hit here about an hour ago, but this guy got this guy got in front of you. Yeah, your ET at 20. I tracked you when you were. Tell me something. Is there a pilot on board now? He he does. I better go down and say hi to him. See if I can bug him for a ride to Port, Port Weller. Hey, hey guys, thank you. Rick, Rick T.
Don't push his. Tell him I'm not going to push my luck. Thanks a lot, guys. Well, those guys are very helpful. So that's what it is going on up there in Nanticoke. U.S. Steel. Take in a lot of coal or, no, ore, iron ore. That's what it would be. right up in the window. He gave me a wave. Took a picture of me. That's a long ways up there, isn't it? Amazing. It's amazing. Got her motoring now. You had her slowed down for that other one up there. She got the call to go through the bridge into the lock. The Whitefish Bay. Lovely ship. They're all nice when they're new, aren't they? whatever it might be. Montreal. Well, I'll stick along and walk along with her here.
So we got to see the captain, got a wave from him. Now we're looking north, up to the line. from Port Colburn. Got to see my friend. Wave hi, say hello. That'll be it from now. Send us your comments, your likes, subscribe if you want to, and uh, we'll keep bringing you more from this site. All right, that's it.